everyone, and welcome to the uh, Reviewing the Civil War podcast. Glad you are here uh, with us today. Um, and we are going to uh, investigate the Missouri Compromise and why this was such a key factor uh, in fracturing the country and the Union uh, back in the 18. Uh, hundreds when when the Missouri Compromise was first uh, announced. So let's 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 lead up to what what was the why did we have to have a compromise? What does this mean? And so we're going to take I've got some maps I'm going to show. First one's going to be of a map of uh, 1789, and here we see uh, and this is very interesting: free states, slave states, and uh, the number of uh, states that were in uh, play at the time. And uh, one of the things that you can notice is that uh, there were a lot more slave states than were free, and maybe even some of the states that you thought were free were actually slaves, so slave owning. So this is what uh, the country looked like at the time, and what's interesting is that you know, we have the, what on this map it says Colony of Louisiana, which is the, which was then, you know, sold to France. And then, uh, which is a whole other story. But then we have the the, the New Spain uh, with California, Texas, etc., which then eventually became part of Mexico. And up in the very, very north, we have what's called Rupert's Land. Again, fascinating history, all of these, uh, which was part of the United Kingdom. And so the United States, as we know, purchased the Louisiana territory um, the, with the Louisiana Purchase. And from there, uh, we sent expeditions up into this new, up into this new land. And this was when uh, Lewis and Clark, and I got a map up here, um, showing how they disembarked basically from uh, St. Louis area, uh, roughly around that area, um, and they went up the Missouri River, and they were checking all the, you know, looking for basically, they were looking for a passage to the to the west to the Pacific Ocean, and um, they actually almost did it. Uh, it was actually quite uh, quite remarkable how they did it. We look, we're here with GPS and maps and everything. They had nothing, so how they did, how they accomplished this was really in itself was great. Another great read is to read Lewis and Clark's uh, expedition, but. Uh, they went, as you can see in the map here, They, do you see where my red line is? Basically, they followed the Missouri River up north where they hit the Rocky Mountains. Uh, long story short, they crossed the Rocky Mountains, got to the Oregon County, got to the Pacific Coast, and then turned around after winter and came back. And all of this territory now, uh, and by the way, they were constantly on the north, the, uh, the British had armed the Blackfeet Indians who were constantly harassing them from the north uh, and and then from the south. Uh, the the conquistador, the soldiers of the of the Spanish um, army were harassing them and actually chasing them. So they they were getting it from both sides as they went up this uh, supposed tor territory that we uh, the United States claimed. And um, uh, yeah, but anyway, once this uh, once this new territory was discovered and and mapped basically the questions now came as to we're going to be making states how are we going to bring these states in if you know they're going to be either slave state or a free state and this is how this is why the Missouri Compromise became so important on the next map I'm going to show you a real rough idea of land and you can see the 36 parallel which is what the Missouri Compromise said anything below the 36 par parallel would be slave owning everything above would be free and of course there was a huge map land of you know there's a huge dispar um, disparity here especially thinking that you know we didn't have a war with Mexico yet, so the, all that southern, uh, that was owned by Mexico, and we had no idea that we were ever going to uh, get it. Um, and when we finally get to 1837, we can actually see a map here, which kind of shows, like, yeah, that Missouri Compromise is going to become an issue. And we had, uh, even you know, Thomas Jefferson predicted that this was going to this this 
was going to fracture the country. Uh, he predicted this, and so did a lot of other people back um, back in the days when this first compromise came about. Thought it was a bad idea, uh, and and you know, looking back in hindsight, it was a it probably was a bad idea. Um, they should have addressed the issue then and there. But but why was slavery so important? Well, you we all know that with the invention of the cotton gin, uh, the ability to produce cotton became you know, the mass produce it uh, with slave labor uh, became so important. And cotton re- literally was the gold standard for the emerging United States. Um, and it was something that I think everyone knew that we, you know, they, they needed. So there was that, that overwhelming demand to produce cotton, which was a key in, in, in issue of why slavery was needed. The Missouri Compromise has been in effect for about 10 years. Uh, there's um, the uh, President Jackson, Andrew Jackson, um, defeated John Quincy Adams. Um, and they, uh, and this is really kind of where we see the birth of our parties um, happening. Back then, you know, uh, Thomas Jackson had the, Andrew Jackson, <laughs> sorry, Um Andrew Jackson, uh, they, his supporters were called the Jacksonian Party, which eventually became the Democrats. Okay, um, whereas John Quincy Adams, uh, his party was called the the well National Republicans at the time, but they eventually became the Whigs. And so uh, these two parties had both northern and southern uh, delegates in Congress, and you know the uh, the northern uh, congressmen. While there was abolitionists who were pushing their agenda, the northern congressmen, I would hate to say that um, they, they, turned, uh, they, turned, uh, they turned a blind eye because at that point in time, uh, supporting, not supporting slavery wasn't going to get you unelected or you, you, know, you weren't getting elected because of one stance. Um, there was other things that were on the mind. So for a lot of the Northerners, they would just, you know, uh, allow the, the Southern uh, states to do as they wished in this uh, regard because they didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, that big a deal and why stir the boat, why stir the pot, stir the boat when you could, they, now, of course, Northern congressmen were labeled doe faces, uh, meaning that they would just be slapped around by the Southern states uh, whenever, you know, issues of slavery came up um, to vote by the more hardcore northern congressmen who wanted to abolish slavery, but the um, the, the will uh, to do it was really wasn't there. However, this was a powder keg, right, and it would explode. This Missouri Compromise would explode. So why was the Missouri Compromise so important? Well, because one, as you we just mentioned, there was a huge disparity in the amount of land that would be uh, given as the uh, new states were being formed and, and being admitted. So that was one issue. The compromise actually came about with the addition of Missouri being a slave state um, uh, and then uh, above the 36th parallel and then uh, the addition of Maine would be the Northern Free State. So, and this is where we start to see states, the number of states uh, being equal between North and South started to become, uh, started to become important. And we can actually see this, we see down here in these numbers, they had to have equal. So if you're bringing in one state you, as a free state, uh, another state has to come in as a slave state. And so maintaining the status quo then in, in maintaining the balance uh, in Congress, which was really getting to the point of uh, violence, uh, it did, which, you know, we look at it today and we think about our own Congress, right, and and the Republicans and Democrats going at each other. However, uh, this was, back then, it was even worse, where congressmen were pulling pistols, p- pulling out Bowie knives, uh, fistfights happening on the floor. Um, outside and then as well as outside uh, between representatives, uh, it was really uh, free for all, and we can see that there was a a duel 
uh, that happened, which actually occurred of a fatality between uh, Jonathan Silly of Maine and Will Graves of Kentucky. Now, this, uh, this was not a precursor to the Civil War. However, it was definitely north against south. Uh, and, you know, um, Silly was a Maine um, congressman. The issue was not about slavery. It was actually, uh, unfortunately, it was a newspaper man who got insulted, uh, who then went to Congressman Graves to, delishu, to, ish, to deliver a dueling challenge to Silly, who, who was the one who insulted the newspaper man. But when, you know, Silly refused the, the dueling letter that Graves was trying to give to him, Graves got insulted. <laughs> and so Webb, so this guy named Webb, this newspaper man, um, who was part of the Whig Party, uh, used used Will Graves of Kentucky to deliver this note because Webb knew Silly would never do, never accept it if it was delivered by Webb personally, um, being that he was a newspaper guy and they didn't think much they didn't think much of those of those people, um, and so anyway became, the duel became uh, was between Kentucky uh, William, William Graves and Silly of Maine and Silly was shot and killed. You know it's it's interesting that the, the, the duelist went out and they, they fired once and they, they both missed and you would think at that point in time okay guys look we're, we're cheating death here let's call it but no they were adamant and especially uh silly uh, was adamant and they fired twice again missed it's like okay now let's call it please and a lot of their seconds were begging them to stop but third round and this time the bullet hit uh, silly and he basically it hit him and he bled to death he bled out uh, on the site so it was a huge uh, a huge uproar um, on this but you know uh, the issue again wasn't so much slavery but it was north and south and, and this was, was this, this was a kind of like a starting uh, what do you call it foreshadowing of, of things to come so that kind of gets you caught up with the uh, Missouri Compromise and why it was so detrimental uh, to the United States and why it was a key factor in the fracturing of the Union. Uh, we will now, next uh, next podcast, we will talk about Texas, how it became the Republic of Texas or better known as the country of Texas. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And, and w- w- why the, why Congress dragged their feet for so long before admitting them into uh, into the Union and then of course the resulting uh, Mexican-American War so that'll be our next podcast thank you all very much if you like what you're hearing if you enjoy this please like subscribe and uh, leave a comment too if there's something that you want to hear thanks again until next time cheers <music>